Okay, we are live, but we got to let it breathe, baby, just for a minute here. And then we're going to get things cooking, rocking, rolling. Really excited for tonight's podcast, and we're good. So, welcome in, everybody. It is the Mile High Huddle Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Jensen, with me, as always, my fellow football priest. You know him, you love him, Zach Kelberman. Zach, the Broncos, we learned late last night, three Pro Bowlers this year which is a market improvement over the singular Pro Bowler the Broncos had in 2022. Two alternates, Quinn Miners and uh, the, the fullback, uh, Burton. Burton. But you were a little hot, it seemed like, on Twitter about Cortland Sutton right. getting snubbed. What, what are your thoughts? Do you think he really was snubbed? Yeah, I don't. In my heart of hearts, no, Chad, because if you compare the stats to the three receivers that made it, his yardage isn't even close. He was at 700 something. All the other players are at 1,100 plus. If he had the yards, because he has the touchdowns and he's made arguably the three best catches of the entire season, if he had yeah. the yards, he would have been in. But I just thought maybe with the touchdowns, he'd have a chance at an alternate. Man, I feel you. It's that 10 touchdowns on its by itself is pro bowl worthy. But like you said, you throw in the context of just how acrobatic and just, you know, what some of them were. Yeah, yeah, man, it's that frustrating, unfortunate lack of yardage when your quarterback is barely averaging and sometimes passing well below 200 yards a game. And then just when you need that last, perhaps that, you know, spike of momentum before the teams get announced and the final voting gets uh, tallied, not only do you get hurt with a concussion missing the better part of two games, right. but then the guy who's been feeding you gets yanked. Yeah. So it just kind of conspired, unfortunately, for uh, Sutton. But your boy, Patrick Sertan, two years in a row. Uh, Justin Simmons gets a multiple Pro Bowl, uh, joining, I think it was two Broncos safeties ever to get multiple Pro Bowls in Denver. Uh, and then, of course, the rookie. This was a little bit of a surprise. I got to admit, Zach, I was happy to see it. Not surprised like undeserving. Surprised like, oh, really? You're going to give him that? Okay, cool. Marvin Mims, the rookie, as a returner, gets in Pro Bowl. Isn't he the third Broncos rookie uh, in franchise history to make the Pro Bowl? Last since Philip Lindsay. Definitely happy for Marvin Mims. The Broncos special teams, I want to give a shout out once more for the entire season. How good Ben Kotwika and Mike Westoff have uh, shaped the unit. In terms of Simmons and Sertan, though, I feel like they got in off name recognition because the Pro Bowl chat is a popularity contest. It's been that way for years, and it seems to really be the case um, this year. All Pro is where it's at, and I hope that Patrick Sertan can at least get that recognition. Or Quinn Miners, who was... If you want to pick one snub from the Broncos, yeah, I think Quinn Miners would be the biggest one. I hope he can get at least second-team All-Pro. And you think about it from Sertan. I'm not saying the Broncos should. I'm not saying I want them to. But another Pro Bowl on Patrick Sertan's resume helps the Broncos if they want to go that route. And you know what route I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely minor snubbed. And I'll, I'm going to quote uh, Mr. Producer here who says Quentin Nelson keeps getting grandfathered in. That's two years in a row, I would argue, that Nelson's been grandfathered in. And Miners, you know, he was – He's been a top one, two, or three guard in the NFL all season long. Mm -hmm. Has he had his lapses here and there? Sure. He's not impervious. He's not completely bulletproof. But that dude should be recognized for how good he's been this year. And I think he will. Uh, as I wrote about last night, disappointing to be snubbed in the Pro Bowl. But, and this is kind of the way it's been often lately, Zach, for the Broncos, is guys getting snubbed by the Pro Bowl voting because they're a, on a crappy team. Right. So the fan scrutiny is not on the Broncos, but the AP, you know, they'll they'll put them on. David, thank you, brother. The Papa Bear in the house. So good to see you. Hope you had a great Christmas. Hope you had a great uh, New Year and Happy New Year. It says good evening to everybody St saying nine and eight, baby. Buckham, MHH for life, Denver Bronx for life. Thank you, David. Much love and respect to you, big dog. Hope you're doing well. Um but yeah, I want to see I want to see Quinn Miners in there. Let's see what Sam Bam says with a very generous super chat. And yes, tonight, by the way, guys, we are doing the Mount Rushmore reveal. We're going to show you the graphic. It's going to be really cool. Stay tuned. Uh, Sam Bam says, "Evening. Though the season's been a rocky ride, no pun intended. I think it'd be a plus 
to finish the season with a winning record despite no playoffs. Hoping the Broncos finish on a strong note. Go Broncos. Yeah, Eric had a nice article. I think it was Tuesday. might have been yesterday. Uh, kind of breaking down the stakes of, you know, do you want to root for the Broncos to win this game relative to draft positioning and whatnot? And, um, you know, as a kind of a draft geek, Zach, Eric would debate me on this, but he, at the same time, he said, look, once you get past the top 10 in this class, you're basically sixes when it comes to the first round. So in that case, I'm saying, you know what? I don't care if it costs you two or three uh, draft p positions, you know, uh, or slots. Go beat the Raiders. And on a positive note, not only snap the streak to the Raiders, but give this team its first technically winning season in many, many moods. Yeah, I'm a little conflicted. Uh, we have Michaela, 999 Super, the Duchess hopping in. Thank you so much, Michaela. I'm going to give my opinion. I want to just, uh, real quickly, I want to just uh, acknowledge Michaela. I'm a little conflicted, Chad, because it, it could be the difference in getting the quarterback that you want and another player. Because if you drop down to 11, that might be uh, Penix territory. If you win the game, um, you might lose out on a quarterback like that. But ending that streak, ending the Kansas City streak, and also a winning record for the first time since 2016, that would be important to carry over into next season. Michaela, so good to see you tonight. The Duchess, as Zach said, we love you much, much love and respect. She says, am I wrong for wanting a loss against the Raiders so that we can move up to draft a quarterback? No, I don't say you're wrong. Um, I have my doubts that taking an L there is going to be all that worth it for the Broncos relative to the class. But at the same time, you have to weigh what's more important, you know, the ending on a positive ending with a winning record and snapping that streak. Cause Zach, not only would you be snapping the Raiders streak, you'd be snapping the losing season streak. And what does that do for you as a team spiritually? What does that do from an energy and kind of a mindset thing uh, going forward? I think Sean Payton has already proved that he's been a net positive on the Broncos. He has moved the needle. Not far enough, obviously, in year one, but he has moved the needle. Uh, so you could just say, Zach, for example, hey, I'm happy with that fact. Sean Payton, we now know, has moved the needle. Let's just take that for what it is and bolster draft position and lose to the Raiders. I don't fault anyone, Zach, for who may, like Michaela, may be rooting for a loss to hope for one or two better spots up the draft board. No, I don't fault anyone. It's To me, it's a win-win. If they win the game, uh, they end that streak and everything we talked about. If they lose this game, they secure the highest draft pick possible, which could be the difference in getting a quarterback or uh, the second-rated player on your board. So win-win uh, in my opinion. The Ronk in the house. What's going on, big dog? Much love and respect to you. Hope you're doing well. And uh, hope you've had so far a couple of two, three, four days of a good 2024, my friend. Um, okay, should we... Here's a good, here's a quick point here from uh, Phil jumping in on Facebook. Love you, big dog. Thank you, Phil. Happy New Year right back at you. He says, does Pro Bowl selection raise the price to keep or restructure the players who were selected to the Pro Bowl? MHS for life. Buck them. Go Broncos. Uh, well, here's what it does. For, really, I mean, anytime you get an accolade, Pro Bowl, All-Pro, MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, those kind of things, it obviously is a bargaining chip. It makes your resume better. And you can go to the to the negotiating table, Zach, and ask for more. Doesn't mean you're always going to get more, but generally speaking, it does inflate your value. Uh, the big thing everyone's been concerned about is relative to Patrick Sertan getting the Pro Bowl because, and here's why, and it's only applies for what it's worth, guys, if the Broncos don't extend him early and exercise him his fifth year and let him play out the fifth year, but According to Mr. Producer's research here, the Pro Bowl only affects the fifth-year option on rookie contracts. So Sertan's fifth-year option, by virtue of this Pro Bowl he just got, goes up $2.6 million. But the Broncos will obviously want to extend him before he gets to that fifth-year point anyway. Uh, and there may be, you know, like we don't know the exact nature, Zach, or every detail of Justin Simmons' contract, Marvin Mims. There may be some bonus incentives there for getting accolades like Pro Bowl, but the only one we know of for sure is how it affected Sertan's fifth year if he does play on a fifth year. 
It certainly doesn't hurt anyone's negotiating power, but every negotiation, every contract is a individual, unique situation. So what Simmons want could be different than what Sertan wants and and so on and so forth. But Phil, it, it, if the Broncos are looking, again, not saying they should or will, but if they're looking to deal Sertan to maybe move up the draft or stockpile uh, draft capital, having that Pro Bowl on his resume, his second, doesn't hurt. Zeus in the house, the first face etched. On, I mean, this is the guy that got us rolling as a as a podcast when Zach and I decided, hey, let's do this as a live stream. We were kind of feeling our way through it, and Zeus provided us a lot of encouragement and inspiration and direction and support. Love you, Stu. He says, hi, all. Let's end the season by beating the Raiders, finish with a winning record. That's what I'm saying. I mean, gun to your head, Zach. What, what do you want to see? Do you want to see the Broncos tank for – this last game for draft position, or you do you want to see some streaks in? I don't want to see tanking like intentionally losing. I think that's a loser mentality, and it would translate or carry over into next season, and that's not what Sean Payton, if he wants to build a winning culture, it's not how you go about business. Tanking ended weeks ago, Chad, when they went on that winning streak. If they lose, they lose. It wouldn't be the worst thing, but I, I guess in my heart of hearts, I would like to see a victory because, again, the momentum for next season is, not having that streak against the Raiders. You ended it against Kansas City. The first winning record since 2016 is a big deal in Broncos country. So I'd say I'm rooting for a victory. Especially with it being year one of the Peyton regime, you know, starting things off with an authoritative. I mean, there will be always the, the people, Zach, who will pick nits, but being able to improve on the previous win total by four games and then also providing and snapping you know, providing a win streak and snapping the seven-year uh, losing streak, that's an authoritative planting of the flag. Hey, you see guys continue following me up the mountain we go. And you don't know what the limits of that can be when it comes to how it can affect positively a team. George, brother, he says, Chad, I'm with you as we need uh, to break our losing streak to the Raiders. And in that way, makes you next year better. Denver Bronx for life, MHH for life. Yeah, but again, guys, I don't fault anyone like Michaela who might say, you know, yeah. but honestly, Zach, I'm at this point with it because the stakes, that's what the stakes are. It's a matter of snapping streaks, improving draft position by a couple of spots, but I'm not going to be mad either way it shakes out really, because either way there's benefits. That's the good thing going into the season finale. So smouse in the house, big dog. What's going on? Zachary appreciate this. Very generous. Super says no disrespect to Russ, but he needs to go. I don't like his play, performance, or attitude. I know he helped beat KC, but he's washed. MHH for life. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hard time, Zach, going fully in on Russ. But as everybody knows, the loyal listeners of our show, I kind of fell off the Russ train after week five and, and started really feeling like, yeah, maybe there is something to the whole wash thing. Is he fully washed? No. He can play. Uh, but is he the same, you know, franchise caliber guy that he was all those years in Seattle. He's clearly not that guy anymore. And that's what I was going to say. I don't think he's washed, washed. You know, when, when we watched uh, Matt Ryan last season, that I looked at him and I said, that guy is definitely washed. I don't necessarily see that with Russ. I think he's on the downturn of his career. He's lost a lot athletically and he's not the same player as he was. But most importantly, he doesn't fit Sean Payton's system. And the Broncos need a quarterback, whoever that may be, that fits what Sean Payton wants to do. So... I was going to read this spot from Eric um, about kind of the window where the Broncos are, but it's basically as it stands right now, depending on how a few other games play out, et cetera, the, the highest they could be picking is 11 and the lowest I think is 16, right? Zach is, or am I getting that wrong? Uh, either way, it's that little window. It's just, it's that first little window outside the top 10. Sam Bam, my brother, number two tonight. Love you says, win or lose, the Broncos will have to trade up to probably three within picks three or seven to seven to take a top QB, hoping for Jaden Daniels. That will probably cost the same draft capital regardless of where the Broncos pick after whatever comes in the season finale. Zach? See, that's where I kind of disagree because going from 16 to 7 is different than going from 11 to 7. If you can save a, a third-round pick or a second-round pick or a player in the process, that's a big deal. And to the previous thing about 
win or lose and how it's going to shake out. We don't have the benefit of hindsight, Chad. You know, during the draft in April, if the Broncos want a quarterback and they're picking 16 and that quarterback goes 14, I will rue the fact that the Broncos won that last game because it was entirely meaningless. So it's 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 a one domino has to fall before the other. But Sam, it would be a little bit more palatable to move four spots as opposed to, you know, 10 or 11 spots. Yeah. I don't disagree. Naj, what's up, big dog? Love you. Mount Rushmore. This is a Mount Rushmore cap for sure. He says, hey, brothers, happy new year. Right back at you. Uh, ultimately, this season fell short of expectations, but the resilience the team showed, the wins versus the Chiefs, Bills, and Browns were so encouraging. Uh, Bo Lowry's an MVP. Let's end on a high note. Yeah, that's the thing that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when an offensive lineman's doing his job because you're not hearing his name right? Like that's a good thing. Kind of the same uh, with regard to injuries. Like no one's complaining. Have the Broncos had their injuries? Yeah. Uh, but not the plague that it was Zach, the snake bitten pandemic of injuries the preceding four years. And so it is a credit to Sean Payton's vision of saying, Hey, I know what I don't know. So I'm going to bring in the guys who know what I need them to know so we can avoid this snake bitten thing. Bo Lowry, step on up, uh, Dal Rimple, et cetera. It's been a, definitely another reason too, Zach, why the Broncos were able to go on that five game win streak when they did, they were staying healthy. And even when players were injured, they were coming back except for like the dulcetches of the world. They were coming back a lot sooner. It just sucks, Chad, that the Broncos finally get injury luck and they finally have a season that the chiefs take a, a dump a little bit and they can't capitalize on that. That's what is so frustrating to me. It is. Um, and look, you know, we'd be seeing in a whole different tune right now if you don't, okay, you get blown out by the Lions. You could have actually lived with that. If you don't lose, well, I mean, if you would have beat the Lions, I, I take that back. If you would have beat the Lions and you don't lose to the Patriots on Christmas Eve, you could win the division on Sunday. You could win the division because, as Zach just said, this was a big step back year for the Chiefs. So that's why it's like, hey, man, every game counts in the NFL. And when you get down the stretch – that becomes even more obvious. Uh, the Triple C, Colby on Facebook. Good to see you, big dog. Much love. It says it's part of culture improvement. What happened to Raider Week? Any divisional opponent we have to get up for, and we want to smash them to get better and be a playoff contender again. Yeah, well, that's definitely what Sean Payton believes. I mean, I can guarantee you that. Uh, this is something we know. It's Raider Week. Um, it's a game that counts on the standings. No, they're going to be going into this to win it. It's just a matter of, as fans, where's your rooting interest fall? Are you hoping they, you know, win it and snap some streaks, Zach, or improve draft? I think it's more of an emotional thing than a, a standing thing, you know, because both teams are eliminated. They're not going to go to the postseason. It would give the Broncos uh, momentum for next year. It just is a matter of how badly you want the Broncos to have that winning record or whether you want the Broncos to have draft positioning. It's subjective. By the way, get this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna segue back to the Pro Bowl thing because I pulled up the uh, information I needed. We're both of us kind of groping at some of the historical distinctions or milestones that these some of these Pro Bowls were for the Broncos this year. For Patrick Sertan, he is only the second Broncos corner ever. Okay, the first one being uh, Willie Brown from who this was 64, 65 Pro Football Hall of Famer Willie Brown. So Sertan, the second Broncos cornerback joining Brown to earn a Pro Bowl in two of his first three seasons. You got to remember, Champ Bailey didn't start his career in Denver. Neither did Aqib Tlaib. Chris Harris didn't quite shake out to get two in his first three uh, as a pro. And then also get this, Sertan joins the aforementioned Willie Brown, Ring of Famer Louis Wright, Champ Bailey, Chris Harris Jr., and Aqib Tlaib as the only Broncos uh, cornerbacks to be named a pro bowler in consecutive years. So that's the distinction for Sertan, Zach. And then I want to grab, uh, mention a couple of things about Simmons. Sertan had a good season. I, I think he is deserving based on his, his name recognition and the, the cachet he's built up around the league, but the Patriots game kind of soured me on him a little bit. It took me off the, you know, he's the number one cornerback in the NFL indisputably when you allow uh, who what Devonte Parker to, to roast you one-on-one -on -one in a crucial gotta have it must win situation. It kind of took the bloom off his rose a little bit. We'll see how the all pro shakes out. 
but he's not been the game changer like a champ Bailey or like a Deion Sanders, like we expected. That's funny. You bring that up because I remember, you know, Christmas Eve, we have a family party every Christmas Eve. I'm with my brother, Derek. Some of you have met Derek. He's been to the meet and greets before, uh, but he was kind of gallows humor, right? Like trying to find the, the funny and the, in the dark side of things. And just commenting about how, yeah, leave it up to Parker. Leave it up to the Broncos to make Parker look like, you know, the first round pick everyone hoped he was going to yeah. be back in the day. Um, but not only that game, Zach, that one stands out as a bummer for Sertan. The Dolphins game stands out as a bummer for Sertan. Um, but I do think he's – and I, I'm with you. This has been a solid relative to Sertan expectation season, not a great one. But relative to, like, the other corners out there, I, I don't disagree that he was Pro Bowl caliber, but he missed some of those big impact games, right? The big game-changing plays. He had his pass breakups and all that. Power to him, one pick, um, and a couple of really ugly games. So for what it's worth, uh, Zavely, is it Zavely? Zavely? Welcome. Thank you for the super. Says, if the Broncos don't move up in the draft and they don't get a quarterback, what would you want them to get? They would still have Jarrett Stidham. So – you know, if the Broncos just stamp at Zach and don't get a quarterback in the first round, what would you hope they do? I mean, take your pick. They're in a position where they can go BPA on pretty much anyone. Quarterback, they can take a, a tight Brock Bowers, maybe a receiver, maybe Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. They can go quarter if you move on from Patrick Sertan. They can go safety. They might need a center if they let Lloyd Cushenberry walk a defensive lineman. They need help everywhere. So I would prefer a quarterback depending on who that is. But I mean, it's throw a dart and you could land on a player that would help the Broncos. Yeah. I'm QB one or bust, you know, find a QB one for the future. Uh, but if events conspire or they don't have the grade or whatever, I'm all about edge rusher. Get it. Find if you can a Batman caliber edge rusher. And I think, you know, you might not be landing on a Vaughn Miller uh, picks 11 through 16 Zach, but you know, guys like J.J. Watt, they slip. They don't always go number one. Like if anyone would have known that year, for example, Zach, that that J.J. Watt was going to become the guy that he was, I'm not convinced Von Miller is the first defensive player taken in that draft. I, my my heart and, you know, I, I want to say yes, but that just goes to show sometimes you find gems, even at edge rusher, a little bit later in round one. Uh, but guys, let's, uh, let's take a second and do the – uh, some matters of business. First things first, the jersey raffle for the month of December. You guys know what we do. We take the top finishers, the top 10 finishers on Super Chat in a given month. Their names go in a hat. We do a random selection raffle uh, live here with y'all. And the winner gets a Broncos jersey of their choosing. A couple things, and especially that now that I know Phil's in the room, on Facebook, what we have to do is go back to, uh, and we're starting this off uh, in January, so this is a retro active thing starting January 1, 24, is we have, to, we have to set a goal of stars for the month in order to do the jersey, in order to pull the trigger on the jersey. Uh, Facebook's reporting has gotten better for us so that we can track where guys are in the rankings, so to speak, like we're able to easily on YouTube. So we're going to set each and every month. Like, for example, if, if like we did when we first started doing this on Facebook, which is like, Hey, we get 200,000 stars this month. We're going to raffle off a Jersey to Facebook only. That's what we're going to be doing. So stay tuned for more details on that. Uh, but, but Scott, are we ready? Uh, okay. I guess, should we, should we mention the top? Uh, let's just read through the top 10 real quick, real quick. So, Oh, we got 12 today. We're doing 12. Lottery. Okay. All right. Let's hear the names. The Duchess, Michaela Parker, the Lady D, Deanna Hendry, Najal Toth, the DWI guys, Ethan, Chris Hernandez, who's been an animal lately, Zeus, uh, Gary, Troy, and hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm getting one of these from Scott in the green room. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, Mike Edel. Okay, Mike Edel at nine. And then 10 is, stand by, stand by, Sam Bam. Okay, cool. So Sam Bam, 10, uh, EJ, and then I didn't see who the, tw I didn't catch the 12th one. That's F.A. Okay, okay, cool. So it's a random selection. We'll do the last one. And, and that's right. Keep it in mind, too, guys, that it's weighted. 
So Michaela, for example, has more tickets in the hat as the number one finisher on, on in December than the last ticket in the hat, FA or EJ, for example. So with that being said, first one out randomly is FA, okay? Thank you, FA. You know we love you, big dog. EJ's out. All right, that was back-to-back. -back. Gary, the GLP's out. He's won so many jerseys. I know he would love to win another one, but uh, Gary, we love you. Lady D is out, okay? One of the top, top. Chris is out. Wow, okay. Uh, Troy is out. Zeus is out. Mike Edel, out. Ethan, the DWI guys, out. Uh, Naj, unfortunately, out. Sam Bam, out. Which gives... It's Michaela Parker. Makes sense. She had more tickets in the hat. Statistically and probability wise, she would uh, she'd be the winner. So, Michaela, you are the December jersey winner. You let us know what you want to do. If you want to get a jersey, when you know she's done a lot of uh, very Zach selfless things with her winnings at times, like saying, "No, I want my jersey to go to this person. Let this person choose." I'm not saying that to, to set the expectation. That's what she's going to do this time. I'm not trying to twist your arm. I'm just saying that's the caliber of, of person Michaela Parker is. We love you. She is the 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 gas that makes this podcast go. I was trying to think of like coal or steam powered. You get my analogy here, Michaela. You make this podcast go. You are an indelible member, and we love you and appreciate you so much. Congratulations, and uh, let us know what you uh, prefer this time. But don't leave. we got to do the Mount Rushmore here in a minute. Speaking, though, of congratulations, we have Darren a.k.a. Papa Kendall, jumping in with a generous celebratory super chat because Nick is a father as of today. This is what Darren says. Congratulations to Nicholas Kendall. As of today, he is the very proud dad to a healthy little boy. His first, the gaffer and gammer are ecstatic too. That's awesome. That's like, uh, that's like uh, some Lord of the Rings. I love that. Give our best to Chris. Congratulations to the Kendalls. Very, very cool. Um, cute little, cute little guy, you know, adorable. But yeah, congratulations to you, Darren, be becoming a grampy and to Chris becoming a, a gaffer and a gammer. And congratulations to Nick and Natalie and everyone in your family. And one more Broncos fan has entered the world. So that's always a good thing, Chad. So cool. Yes, the family grows. MHH continues uh, to build critical mass. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, good stuff. Uh, mama's okay from what I heard from Nick and the baby's a cutie and doing just fine. Everything's great there. So uh, Bobby digital jumping in from the top rope. Thank you. On Bobby. Super chat. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby. So all I want is the Broncos to finish the season with a win, especially against the Raiders. Don't care about draft position. It's all about getting the right players. Hashtag MHH for life. Yeah. I got to tell you, man, as a child of the eighties, you guys have heard me talk about this before growing up with the Elway posters on the wall and the three amigos and stuff. Uh, and all these kind of guys, you know, like the playing with this stuff and, and Hey, I'm Elway when we're playing in the street and stuff like that as a kid, it cannot stand any longer. This losing streak to the Raiders. It is ignominious, ignominious. It is, uh, embarrassing. And, uh, that's got to be the priority for me. Go out there, snap that streak, and then but in so doing, Zach, you snap the losing streak from a season perspective. Seven straight. Well, what is it? It's six straight losing seasons, right? So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah. No, seven straight. Seven straight. It's ridiculous, and it's been way too long since the Broncos were victorious. Ideally, Bobby, the Broncos would win this game and still be in position to draft the quarterback, whoever player they want. Sorry, six straight. It is six straight. My bad. It, it, it's all – it doesn't even matter, Chad. That's way too long regardless, six or seven, and they have to uh, put an end to it uh, this Sunday. No doubt. Bobby, thank you, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, we got more royalty in the house. KB, Kenny, what's going on, big dog? Much love and respect to you. He says, if Michael Penix, Jaden Daniels, or Bo Nix fall to us in the first round, do we draft them? Yeah. History <laughs> says no, because one or two of them will fall to the third or fourth round. It's a risky move, though. Um, no you know, the biggest thing on Penix is the injury jacket. And that will scare some teams off, and it will affect his draft stock. But I would still be shocked, Zach, if he isn't a first-round pick. Jaden Daniels has 
skyrocketed by virtue of this college football season. I mean, he's he's most draft Knicks view him, Zach, as a virtual top eight pick, like lock, lock him in. Bo Nix, though, is a guy who is, you know, depends on who you ask type thing. Um, I could see him being the type of quarterback that goes mid first round. And a lot of this KB, as you know, you're a veteran is going to be contingent on pre-draft stuff from senior bowl stuff to combine stuff, pro days, all the different little things that end up factoring in. It can really affect a player's draft stock. Bo Nix though, Zach wouldn't surprise me if he isn't hearing his name called uh, and you get to like pick 29 30 and some team trades up and, and takes him there because they want that fifth year option on him or something like that. But we'll find out. Um, but I do think if the if a quarterback that Peyton wants is there, they'll take him. Scott's saying Bo Nix is the kind of guy that gets invited to the draft, has an uncomfortable camera shot as he slides to day two, kind of drew Lockie in that sense. That I was gonna say maybe JJ McCarthy could be the guy that slips a little bit, but there's no chance Daniels even makes it to the Broncos. Penix could be a top 12 guy. Um, Nick should be there. I, there's only two ways I see these guys sliding to round three or four, like any. Uh, just alleged either one of them suffers an injury in the pre-draft process or like some Laramie Tunsil gas mask bong video surfaces that plummets their draft stock. I don't see that happening. One of those guys should be available when the Broncos won the clock. And if Sean Payton wants them, Sean Payton's going to take them. I mean, you have guys like Joel Klatt, for example, you know, who's considered one of the quarterback gurus of college football saying that if he were picking in this draft, he would take Penix in the top five, without even thinking about it. Uh, but that injury jacket, that's the problem. And he's a Southpaw, you know, um, that those, the, the Southpaw thing does hold some teams back, believe it or not. Um, Sam Bam brother, thank you for another super. And he's given props and congrats to Michaela says, I can't believe I got that close. Yeah. One of these days, dude, one of these days, you know, it's going to happen, but, um, Let's let's do the let's do the Mount Rushmore. Let's show the the graphic. Well, we'll grab this from KB and then we'll do the graphic. Kenny says I'll be at the Broncos game in Vegas. The Broncos are undefeated when I'm at their road games. A perfect one and zero. Oh. LOL. Heck yeah, dude. Well, with the mojo uh, as as a superstar and as a staffer emeritus, maybe Zach KB can bring some of that MHH meet and greet mojo uh, to the table in Vegas. We'll know who to uh, credit if the Broncos emerge victorious. We'll also know who to blame if they don't. That's Appreciate right, it. baby. Um, all right. So what is the MHH Mount Rushmore? It's a uh, funny thing we made up to, to kind of signify the most important, crucial supporters and members of our community over the years. And then last year, we're like, you know what? We should like make it a thing, like an official here are the, the Mount Rushmore's. Uh, super chat superstars of a given year. And so we started tracking it and then we put out a graphic. We did that last year for the first time. We're doing it again this year. We're going to show you the graphic, the official, and there's 20. We have, you know, it's the Rockies. You know, this, this is, there's, these mountains are big. Can, you can etch 20 faces up there. Um, but this year, it's not just the, the flex and the clout of being on the graphic, getting the social media tags and all that, Zach. We're given a little. Every name on this list you're about to see from one to 20 also gets a little thank you care package. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what's in it, but trust you're going to love what's in it. And it's going to signify uh, the achievement of being in on the Mount Rushmore. So with that said, let me pull this up for you. Uh, the official top 20. This is the Mount Rushmore of 2023 at MHH. And I, I wish I could make it bigger. I can't. So I'm going to read it. All right, as you guys are checking it out. Um, number one, first face etched in 2023, Michaela Parker. No surprise. Number two, Ethan, the DWI guys. And what's interesting about this, Zach, is the 2022 Mount Rushmore, the same first two names, only just reversed. It was Ethan at one, Michaela at two, and they swapped places in 2023. Number three, Deanna Hendry. Very cool. F.A. is at number four. Naj at number five, Gary Leeds Palmer, the GLP at six, Troy Boer at seven, Zeus McPeak at eight, David the Papa Bear McElrath at nine, Renardo Scavella at 10. Haven't seen Renardo for a minute, but 
if you guys see Renardo, make sure he knows this. Okay. And I'll find, I don't think I were connected with him on, I don't know that he has a, an X or a Twitter account either. So keep an eye out for him. 11 is Sam Bam. 12 is Chris Hernandez. 13, Jasmine. I love it how many uh, the ladies of MHH are so prominent and it's awesome. 14, Mike Edel. 15, Brent P. 16, David Kilgore. 17, Gregory Vendeland. 18, Gyla Maples. 19, Casey Nickel. And then 20, rounding out the Mount Rushmore, Zach Garth Knight. We have the we're the, so blessed to have the the uh, little listeners that we do, and the Mount Rushmore just symbolizes all of that. The appreciation we have for each and every one of you, and Chad, the care package that you talked about, it's so well deserved for every single uh, name on that list. And Michaela is jumping in to say, "Hey, is it okay if I donate my jersey to Sam Bam? Sam, see, this is what we're talking about. They don't make them any better than the Duchess, no. so it's okay by us. Hey, that's your decision to make, and I'm sure." Uh, Sam Bam would love it. Very kind. Very cool. Gary jumping in with a generous super. One of the Mount Rushmore superstars of 23 saying congrats to Michaela on the jersey. And special congratulations, of course, to the new daddy, Nick Kendall. Very cool. Thank you, Gary. So there's your uh, there's your Mount Rushmore. Now we're going to put this out on our all of our social media. And if if we're connected with you on those various platforms, we will be tagging you as well. And then what I need everybody to do, if your name is on this list, is please send us an email, milehighhuddle at gmail.com. And I just need to do a quick update slash verification of your physical shipping address. Okay. So much love and respect, Mount Rushmore. Don't know what we'd do without you guys. And this is, of course, only representing YouTube because Facebook also has its Mount Rushmore members, George Fox. Absolutely on that Mount Rushmore. Michael Ronquillo, Phil McLaughlin, Colby C. Collier, trying to think some of the names. Eric Weber is another one. Um, Miguel would be on that. Facebook, Mount Rushmore, etc. cetera. So uh, much love and respect. We love all of you. Appreciate each, each and every one of you. It's what makes this podcast go. Without you guys, we wouldn't be anything like we are now. So thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Producer has to bounce on out, so we're going to say adios. We'll catch you on the flip-flop, Scott. And uh, we got a few more minutes left, but we are kind of getting there, so any burning topics, get them in the chat, and we will uh, we'll get to them. Michaela says, Sam agreed all his. Okay, so Sam, there you have it, big dog. So what we need from you, Sam, is an email. Uh, when you send us the email uh, talking about confirming your shipping address for your Mount Rushmore email, also include what jersey you would like uh, that Michaela is passing on to you. So cool. Michaela, you're awesome. Uh, but here's what I ask you to do, Sam Bam, is um, go to the Denver Broncos website and click on their shop and verify that the jersey you want in the color and size is actually available. Because every once in a while, things go out of stock and they're hard to find. And I hate people waiting on jerseys. Gary, for example, still waiting on one. Uh, from winning last fall. So keep that in mind. Uh, but very, very cool. Zach, we've gotten some Facebook. We've gotten some uh, lots of YouTube. I want to grab one from the Robot of Doom on Twitch who says, Evening, although we have one game left, what's been your favorite moment of the year and the most disappointing? Zach, for me, most That's easy. beating the Chiefs yeah. was the favorite moment, period, end of story. The most disappointing was, for me, the, the Jets' loss. But mm. what's your answer, Zach? I agree about Kansas City because you didn't just beat Kansas City. You whooped their ass in that second game. It was so rewarding to see. Definitely the highlight of these last seven years. The disappointing game to me, I, I agree. You can name the, the Raiders game, the Commanders game, the Jets game. I'm going to go with the Patriots game. We talked about Patrick Sertan kind of giving up the ghost on that last series in the fourth quarter. You had to have that. You're facing a checked out Patriots team just – I think they were, what, 3-11 and 11 at the time. You're at home. It's a primetime game. You had to have it, and you come out and look like that. So definitely disappointed in that result. Yeah, I mean, there, here's the thing. There have been multiple favorite top moments for this season. I mean, some miraculous Tebow-esque type moments this year. And by Tebow-esque, I just mean the Broncos of 2011, that Tebow season. 
I mean, we could go through them. The Bills win and just how you that sausage got made. I mean, so many different stars Zach had to fall in line in order for that to come out on top. Um, the winning streak in and of itself, the takeaway streak, like some of those we talked about earlier, Sutton touchdown catches. Yeah, uh, you know that would be more plays of the of the year type thing. But a lot of cool moments this year. Broncos did go on a run, and obviously a lot of bummer moments. I mean, but honestly, I could handle the historic beatdown from the Dolphins. I'll take it. I mean, do I want it? No. Do I love it? No. But that Jets game, getting trucked. It wasn't just that they beat you. They pretty they pretty well handled the Broncos in that game. Uh, on on the heels of all the smack talk Peyton had for <laughs> Hackett. All the back and forth, Russ not saving his best play to kind of prove and answer that that was the guy that kind of should be to blame for what happened to me last year or how I played. Just um, a colossal collective failure to rise and meet the occasion still for me is the most indelibly uh, low moment of the season. You can throw the Houston game in there as well. I mean, you took it down to the wire. You had multiple chances to win the game in the end and the Broncos couldn't pull it out. (laughs) There's been more good than bad, though, this season, Chad, and that's what we'll take out of it uh, going into 2024. That is a uh, good question, though, so thank you, Robot. Patrick on Facebook, hey, I could donate you guys some Broncos jerseys if you want them. I have a few Brian Dawkins and a Russell Wilson. Hey, man, we take them as long as they're brand new because, you know, when what we do with them is we pass them on to the community through giveaways and stuff, and uh, in, because of that, it would need to be brand new, and I don't want you to think I'm trying to be choosy, you know, but if they're brand new, absolutely reach out to us, uh, shoot us an email, mile high huddle at Gmail. That'd be really, really cool. Patrick. Thank you, buddy. Um, we have Sam Bam jumping in again to say, can I trade up from spot 11 to the top three of MHH Mount Rushmore? I'll throw in a 2028 seventh round pick and a pepperoni <laughs> pizza. I love That's it. Funny. Yeah, I love it. Nah, you don't need to, man. If you're on Mount Rushmore, you're on Mount Rushmore, bro. And you're deserving of your play, Sam. Definitely. You don't have to trade up. You don't have to give up your draft compensation, your capital. You are definitely appreciated. Thank you. And thank you to Michaela for making that happen. Everybody on Mount Rushmore gets Peyton Manning with the number one overall pick. You know, like <laughs> that's the way it goes. So Sam Bam, love you, big dog. Don't forget to email uh, about the jersey. Um, okay. KB again, can we do Fantasy Football League next season? How did that whole thing I, shake out, Zach? I don't want to talk about it, Chad. I'm still recovering. Oh, no. I, I've uh, been in quite the depressive state the last couple of weeks out of the fantasy semifinals. You, you got to give us the cliff notes. <sighs> if I must. I lost by, I believe it was less than one full point to Johnny Not Bravo. Mm. Uh, if he's listening. And he ended up winning the whole thing. So at least I'm glad I lost to the eventual winner. But what makes it so frustrating for anyone who plays fantasy is you have a player, in my case, it was Taysom Hill, tight end. He had 0.2 points in the fantasy playoffs. If I started a tight end that had one singular point, I would have won that game. And Mm. the cherry on top of that crap Sunday is the next week when I'm playing for the consolation. I ended up in fourth place. What do you think Taysom Hill does? He (laughs) scores a freaking touchdown. So Yes, Kenny, we will do a fantasy league every year. Um, I don't know who's going to be running it, but that's become a tradition. But for right now, I'm a little, the wound is still kind of opened. I'm sure it's going to happen, KB. Uh, let let not your heart be troubled. Keith jumping in, just a reminder that we paid $14 million for Randy Gregory to play for the Niners last year. I, so paying Russ $39 million to play for someone else shouldn't be so dramatic. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of different ways. That Zach, as Keith brings up here, that you can kind of convince yourself of how to, I should say, convince yourself how to live with a redonkulous, unprecedented level of dead money. Um, But it still doesn't get away from the fact that it will have an impact on this team. And the only way that I can see the Broncos fully overcoming it in the first two years post Russ is if you hit on a quarterback in the first round in this draft. Like if you get go out and get your guy and it's a guy that pairs perfectly with Peyton and you're off and running, I mean, look no further than the Texans at how quickly that can move a needle because I mean, Texans have some talent, Zach, but the reason that team has been a factor down the stretch here and, and beat the Broncos earlier this season is because of 
the court, the play of the quarterback. It changed the game. It was the tide that floated all the ships. And yes, D'Amico Ryan's deserves credit as a rookie head coach coming in doing his thing. That's part of it. That's part of how CJ and why CJ succeeded. But I, I think it does distract somewhat from the point that you only go so far. Bill Belichick is living proof of this. You only go so far as your quarterback can take you. And unfortunately, the Broncos uh, had to learn that. Sean Payton put it to the test this year. Russell Wilson can only get you so far. The Broncos bumped up against the limits of the Russell Wilson thing, and they don't want to waste another five years trying to you know, find ways around that obstacle because it's impenetrable, I think, Zach. Well, number one, you're, you're, there's no way to avoid the the financial hit you're going to take from moving on from Russ. The dead money, it's staggering. The thing is, though, Sean Payton came from an organization where they they stockpiled dead money like it was going out of business. Chad, they were a hundred. The Saints were like a hundred million dollars over the salary cap. Every year, they somehow found a way to make it work because you can massage it and finesse it. I'm not that worried. It's going to be a bear, but it's not going to be a franchise-killing issue. The other thing with Russ is that he has offset language in his contract, meaning if the Broncos release him, which they will by March or in March, if he signs with a new team, the, the difference in salary, so if they owe him 39 and a new team pays him 14, the Broncos would only be on the hook for 25 of that. So it's it's it sucks. It's going to be a sticky situation to work through, but I have confidence the Broncos, Sean Payton, George Payton, if you're still around, they'll find a way to make it work. Uh, Pearl, hey, we look forward to seeing you every night. So much love and respect. KB, I moved to South Korea, sure. Chad. <laughs> hey, if you find that mug, dude, let your boy know, you know. <laughs> uh, be on the lookout, as they say, or you military guys, bolo, right? Um, okay. I'm just doing a quick pass to see any possible comments that, that came from earlier that are, um, you know, something different to kind of shift gears a little bit. Normally, obviously we have Mr. Producer helping us pull this out and figure it out. Uh, but I'm just doing a, what's this one here? Okay. So Joe Anthony, will he be there? Whether we pick eleven or sixteen, I'm I'm thinking he's talking Penix. Penix. Uh, what do you think? Let's just assume he is. Penix there in that range, the Broncos are going to be chilling. If Penix is on the board, it depends what Sean Payton wants. We don't we're not privy to that evaluation process. I don't even think Sean Payton knows right now who he wants. That's why you have to go throughout the process. But if he does identify Penix as the guy and he's on the board, you better run that draft card up to the podium because that's could be like you talked about, Chad, a C.J. Stroud situation. They don't have to go through three years of rebuilding. You hit on the right guy. It can happen in one year. The thing is, he might be there at 11. There's a better chance of that. I don't see him being there as it stands now, especially if he wins the, the Natty title at 16. So that's why I'm saying it's it, there's pros and cons to the Broncos winning this game against the Raiders on Sunday. If they lose and secure 11, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. That's all I'm saying. That's why no matter how this weekend shakes out, there are pros for either outcome. Uh, Nick, good to see you. Nick Hale jumping in. What's up, big dog? He says, my priest, just wanted to say Happy New Year right back at you. Uh, he says, looking back this season, we were only a few points away from missing the playoffs for how close some of our losses were. If we can just capitalize on those lost points next year, we're in good shape. Love y'all. Yeah, much love, Nick. And it's true. You know, football, the cliches become cliches because they're true. And football is a game of inches. Um, it's also the type of thing, you know, it's production based. So if those inches that cost you a win, it's like it might only be inches, but it's going to feel like miles because you only get 17 chances in the NFL uh, to put in your body of work for the playoffs. And so sometimes it might have only been a couple of inches or a point or two, Zach, that translates to a loss. But that loss, man, there every win and every loss in the league is so, so much more impactful. But I don't want to take away from what Nick's saying here. I think it's clear again, Sean Payton did move the needle forward. But for him to really hit that uh, light speed, you know, critical mass, et cetera, got to solve the age-old problem that's plagued the Broncos since Peyton Manning 
hung up his cleats. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. They're they're closer. They're closer than they've been since Peyton and Kubiak were around, but they're still not quite there yet. If they have a solid draft and hit on some free agents, they can be right back in the mix in 2024, especially if they get that quarterback, the franchise guy. Uh, KB again, jumping in. Thank you, bro. He says, does Russ's, uh, the fact that Russ played decent or he could have had 30 touchdowns this season introduce any kind of off season trade. No one's trading for that. I don't see it either, Zach, but it's, it is the NFL never say never, but again, it's that contract, the same albatross that's weighing down the team and the same that pushed him off the field. Essentially, uh, is also going to be the, 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 you know, no go zone conversation stopper relative to any potential trade talks internally. I mean, say you're the Cleveland Browns or whatever, pick the team. Yeah, let's look into it. Hold on, let's examine this contract. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I was. we were about to pick up the phone and call George Payton, but pump the brakes on that, Zach. Yeah, I was going to say, every team has access to the same film that we all see and, and better film. And what was proven on tape is that Russell Wilson is not a $245 million quarterback, not even close to that. So I don't see a team picking him up via trade. I could see some interest when he's released, but don't see a trade happening. Oh, yeah. There will be interest when he gets released. There will be those coaches out there going, hey, man, if we get – we know what he was. We know what he could be. We th- still think he's got it. If we can get him in our system, in our scheme, there will be those teams, uh, no doubt about it. And, um, you know, to, to echo Brandon Perna last week or the week prior – wouldn't surprise me to see him all of a sudden he's in a new environment out there chopping it up because, and I don't just Zach, I'm not, I'm not ascribing this to some kind of a curse for the Broncos. No, no, no. It's not that any quarterback, as soon as they leave Denver, they look better. That that's not it. It's not perfectly true. Drew Locke has shown modest improvements outside of Denver. Joe Flacco proved to be a short-term unicorn so far down the stretch for the Browns. We'll see how that plays out. Um, no, the reason why Russ, I could expect reasonably Russ to go somewhere else and actually look and perform better than he has here is I think he got ruined in 2022 by this team and the preceding coaching staff. And you can remove the coach that did it and created that plummet, but the psychological scars for Russell Wilson and the impact of that are still there. And it's tied to a geographic location, unfortunately. So a lot of times, you know, new play, new playmates, new play place, you know, all these things can make a difference on a player. Yeah, I mean, he better hope he goes to a situation, though, where there's a solid running game of solid defense and a coach that allows him to work outside of structure. Otherwise, you're going to be seeing the same Russell Wilson that we've all witnessed the last couple seasons. That just comes with the territory. He's going on 36 years old, Chad, and father time, as we all know, remains undefeated. That's true. Uh, All right, guys. You know what? I know it's Thursday, but I think for the second week in a row, we're going to go ahead and skip the head to head Uh, just because there's nothing to it's a glorified exhibition game. There's things on the table, but it's a glorified exhibition game, unfortunately. So with that being said, uh, don't dip out of here quite yet. We got a couple things to run by you. Another tremendous episode of the Mile High Huddle podcast. If you're not doing so, please follow us on Twitter at the MHH pod. You can follow the main account at Mile High Huddle, Chad at Chad and Jensen, myself at Kelberman NFL and Scott, our producer at Scout Kennedy. If you guys want some merch like we're always rocking each and every day, each and every podcast, check out MHHmerch.com and get you some. If you haven't also drop us a like at Facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle pod. You can find us on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle. And if you haven't done so on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're leaving your football priest a five-star review for a chance to win some of that merch each and every single month. But if anything, y'all, please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans just like you. You know what I just realized, Zach? We got so kind of tied up. over the Pro Bowl stuff, and then we do our giveaway stuff. We do the Mount Rushmore. We didn't even talk about 
the title of this episode, which is what Garrett Bowles had to say, <laughs> breaking ranks. So for the sake of the people who listen to this on demand, uh, I think we got to at least cover this real quick and we're okay. We, we'll, we'll do it relatively pithy style, but Zach, I wanted to get your thoughts on this and whether or not you think perhaps this may be indicative of how the locker room at large may feel about the Broncos benching Russell Wilson. So I'm going to read this uh, bowls at his locker yesterday on the topic of, you know, the quarterback situation, blah, blah, blah. Quote, I don't know, man. My job is to just block for the quarterback. So I protect him on the field. I protect him off the field. That's what the Broncos pay me to do. So as frustrating as it is, it's frustrating for me since I've been here for so long and it's the same crap over and over again. But at the same time, I got to go out there and do my job, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. And then, Zach, one last thing uh, when it comes to the quarterback controversy, again, quote, it's a tough situation that things happen around here. I think Stidham was my 13th quarterback that I blocked for. So it's frustrating for me especially, but at the same time, that's who coach wanted, and I got to do my job, close quote. Your thoughts? I think it says more about Garrett Bowles himself than it does the Broncos locker room, because this isn't the first time that Bowles has espoused something along these lines. I get it. You haven't seen a winning record or a playoff game since you've been in Denver, but listen, you're very highly paid, very well compensated to just block whatever quarterback is back there. It's not ideal to keep changing them out, but the complaining about it doesn't move the needle one way or the other. And I, I feel like Chad, if the Broncos keep him in a 24, these little breadcrumbs that he's laying, these little criticisms can kind of ball up into a bad apple situation. I hope that maybe he realizes the, the self-serving nature of some of these comments. That's all. And it's not the first time he's used this kind of language and verbiage uh, this season. And Sean Payton, I'm going to quote Keith, who wrote this up for us, Keith Cummings, that, you know, Sean Payton made it clear to the team, loose lips, sink ships, and the Broncos really did answer that bell, like as far as, you know, staying off of social media, stuff like that. I mean, there's always the one or two exceptions here and there, but by and large, the team definitely took it to heart. Uh, Bulls, though, you know, he kind of violated it twice this year, speaking out of turn, so to speak. Um Let's just say Aaron dirty laundry publicly. And Russ obviously did at his locker last Friday. Uh, Sean won't like that, but that's a that's a that's already been a soiled situation anyway. But I'm with you. I wonder how this affects his outlook in a Sean Payton, you know, offense or on a Sean Payton roster moving forward. He's acting like he's Walter Jones when he's not. He's been good this year, but he the, the bad Garrett Bowles has still come out. And yeah, he made a comment. Was it after the Jets game that he's, he's, he hates losing or it sucks or something like that? He's been kind of quasi-complaining in bad times, and he doesn't say anything in good times. I don't know. Maybe I, I've never been the biggest fan of Garrett Bowles, so maybe I'm biased, chat. I just don't like the constant wah-wah about the quarterback situation. It's not good for anyone. You know, we get it. Agreed. Agreed. But there you have it, guys. Um, much love and respect. Before we dip on out of here, a shout out to these great Super Chat superstars and supporters tonight. David McElrath, Sam Bam, Michaela Parker, Zeus McPeak, Unique Prepping, that's Zachary Smouse, in the house. Uh, Naj, uh, Zavi. Oh, okay, changed it already from an X to a Z, Zach. You know how I was questioning it? Uh, Darren Kendall, the Papa Kendall, Again, congrats to Nick and his awesome wife, Natalie, and their new healthy little boy. Um, and then on Facebook, and by the way, I mentioned a few names that would definitely be on the Facebook, Mount Rushmore for MHH. One of those who I did not mention that would absolutely be up there, Lawrence Rivera, legendary mythical figure. Phil tonight as well. George, Michael Ronquillo, Colby C. Collier. And guys, Mount Rushmore's, don't forget, shoot us an email so that we can confirm your uh, physical address, et cetera. Appreciate each and every one of you. Zach and I will be back for the last gut reaction of mm. this football season Sunday. We'll look forward to seeing you. Where did it go, Chad? It was just week one, and the Broncos were blowing a game to the Raiders. Hopefully that result is different on Sunday. I saw some comments that I want to address like in two seconds. People are asking about, should the Broncos trade for Justin Fields? That would be the hardest of passes for me personally. 
my prerequisites for the next quarterback, no sloppy seconds, no projects, no reclamations. Let your coach draft a quarterback that's not tainted and build him up from day one from the ground up. So that's my opinion. And whoa, do we have Deanna hopping in at the literal whoa. 11th hour. Thank you so much, Deanna. $50 super. Love you guys. Love you right back, Deanna. Thank you. By the way, Deanna, you're on the MHH Mount Rushmore in case you are just barely joining us. I'll I'll flash it one last time and and fittingly so. Uh, you're on the 2023 MHH Mount Rushmore checking in at number three. So we need you to send us an email verifying your shipping address because every name on the Mount Rushmore this year is getting a little care package. So please send us an email, milehighhuddle at gmail.com to confirm your shipping address. And thank you so much for the super tonight. We love you. We love you. It's at the 11th hour right as we're signing off. But love you, Deanna. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you Sunday for the gut reaction. Have a great start to your weekend. Take care. And as always, go Broncos.